What's going on everyone? I'm gonna show you real quick how you make a GPT, custom made GPT, um, with access to real time stock market data. And um, we're gonna do this very simply. I'm just gonna show you a simple example, but what you will need in order to do this is you will need your own web service. So you'll need a website, whether it's your own locally hosted one, or you know whether it's on AWS or something else like that, or it's hosted by you know Heroku or something like that, you're going to need an, a website with HTTPS. Um, what I am personally using in this example is NG Rock um, with Hypercorn, and I'm also using Court with Python. So that's what we'll be doing here. So the first things first, we're going to import our imports here at the top, and we're going to use Court. And if, if you want to follow along with this example, if you have experience with Court or you know how to use Court, then we're going to say from Court, import Court and JSONify. Um, from Hypercorn, we're going to be importing serve and config. We're going to import asyncio because I, we are going to utilize asynchronous programming for this example. And then we're going to define our basic configuration for the court app as app equals court and then double underscore name in the parentheses. And then from there, we're going to set up a route for the home page, which is just going to have a slash in the decorator here at app.route with just a slash. We're going to define this as home, no arguments. And then for the example, we're just going to return welcome to fudstop.io for this example. And then from here, we're going to set up another route. This is going to act as you know an API data route because we're going to need to connect chat GPT to our APIs that is hosted on our website. So we're gonna call this app.route. And then within the parentheses here, our route to this URL is going to just be API slash data. So the way to connect to this uh, for this example would be HTTPS colon slash slash www.fudstop.io slash API slash data. That's what this means here. Um, we're going to call this function data. We're going to make it async. And we're just going to return a dictionary with a message in it that says hello from Fudstop API. Just uh, to show you the bare minimum of what you can do with API. And then from here, we just make one more function. We're going to call it run app. And we're going to run the court application with Hypercorn. Config equals config. And we're going to say config.bind and whatever port you're going to be using. If you're locally hosting like I am, I'm using port 8000. Um, so that's what we're going to use for the binding. And then we're going to await serve, pass in the app and the config. And then all we have to do now is run it. So our main entry point is going to be if name double equals main with double underscore and quotes, asyncio.run, and then we're going to run the application. So this should be everything we need to at least get it started. Granted that you do have a uh, some way to host this publicly with HTTPS. So we see here in the terminal, it's now running on HTTP. That's local, uh, port 8000, all zeros. But we're going to actually be testing this on the public site, which we can get really quickly from here. Just go ahead and open up a new Chrome browser. We're going to say fudstop.io, first of all. And then you see here, it has our message there. It says, welcome to fudstop.io. Now, if we put in the secondary route that we made, API data, now we see that we get a message, hello from fudstop API, just like we put in the code. Now, how this relates to chat GPT. So what we're gonna do is we're going to go to explore GPTs and we're going to create a new one. And this is the side right here that most people are familiar with. You know, you give it a name. We're going to say stock expert. And we're going to, well, actually, let's do it one better. Let's do stock and options. Whoops, why is it doing that? And every character keeps going back to the other screen. That's annoying. Let's just do stock expert for, because of this error that it's doing for some reason. Stock expert, description, you. Okay, that's going to get really annoying. Why is it doing that? Okay, so that's bugged right now. So we're not going to do anything. I guess I could do this. Um, I'm going to say description is your stock and options expert. That's going to be it. So we'll paste that here. And then instructions. Um, we're not going to do any instructions for now because I'm going to show you how you don't really need them. Um, actually, well, let's do one. I'm going to say get... God dang it. Okay, that's really annoying. Get stock data is what we're going to say. And then 
for the instructions, we're going to say one, if the user selects get stock data, you will present to the user all of the available API endpoints that they can use. So that's basically going to have the GPT know to give you all of the available options um, to its uh, API connection to our website. So essentially that's you know the basic necessity of what you would do to create it, but then you can get a little bit more complex. Let's give it an image real quick. Um, and then from here, you know, you can select its capabilities. I don't like personally having the web browsing on if I'm using my own API because, you know, it can use that as a backstop and like it'll search the web over the API endpoints, which I don't like. We uh, code interpreter and data analysis is a must. Gener uh, image generation, totally up to you. Um, that's your call. Now, what's important here and how we're going to connect it to the website that we made is actions. So we're going to create a new action. And then you're going to have uh, some choices here for authentication. If you want to just open where anybody can use it, and then we're going to put none, which is what we're going to do here in this example. But they do have an API key and OAuth as well. I'm not going to get into that in this video. But for this example, we're going to have no authentication. And then from here, we have to just give it a schema. Okay, so they have examples here. Um, they have a blank template, which you can use. And you have to put your server in. And things like that. I'm just going to go ahead and copy paste this from a different one that I have. So let me see here. This is the current stock trader AI that I have right now, but I'm going to just go ahead and copy paste this for time's sake. And we'll just copy paste this over to our new one. Support GPTs, my GPTs. I just made stock expert right here. So let's go back to the editor and go back to our action. We're going to just paste in what I copied. So this is essentially an, it's an open API schema uh, template. This isn't what it will look like. You have to put your info, you give it a, a name or a title rather. We're going to say stock expert. Is it going to do this even for the schema? Oh, that's going to get annoying. Not sure why it's doing this, but man, it is very annoying. So I'm gonna just paste, I guess I'll have to work from this. Let me see if I can open a new one and if it'll keep doing this, because if it does, then that's kind of annoying. I'm just gonna close out Chrome altogether and go back into it. Okay, let's go and try this again. Yeah, something's wrong with their site right now. Very, very buggy. So if I do this, God, that is annoying. Um, how can I fix this? Because I don't, every time I type, it goes over there. I guess I could just type it here. That's going to be really annoying, but uh, I guess I'll have to. So anyways, um, <clears throat> I'm going to erase this one. Um, and we only have one. Okay, perfect. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to copy this, everything under paths. And I'm just going to go ahead and fix this here. So instead of this, instead of API trading analyst ratings, we're going to put API data, just like we did in our code. Um, it doesn't have any arguments. So we're going to take away the argument or the parameters. And this should be all we need here. Uh, the operation ID is just going to be data. And then we're now we're going to just take this and we're going to paste it in here. I can't even do a line break. I can't even paste it. Come on. GPT, fix your stuff. Okay, so we got that. I'm going to go ahead and copy this for the next one we're going to make. So let's erase that and paste that here. Okay, so now we have API data and we should have a valid uh, URL endpoint down here now. So whenever I hit test here, I'm gonna go ahead and, whoops, I'm gonna go ahead and send this to it so we'll have it. 
Not found. Okay. Anyways, let's go ahead and test this. So you see how it said talked FUDSTOP API? So what it says, it says the FUDSTOP API responded with a message. Hello from FUDSTOP API. So essentially what it did is we just had the GPT visit that uh, endpoint that we made a second ago, which returns hello from FUDSTOP API. Now, how do we get the stock market data to it? Well, very simply. So from here, I'm going to go to my files and I'm going to just make another app route here and we're going to say async def get stock data we're going to pass in a ticker as the argument oh, i'm sorry we're going to say api slash stock data slash and we're going to say ticker just like that we actually need to put this in the route decorator. So hold on a second. So we have to do at app.route. Let me close this thing. At app.route, and then we're going to say in quotes, API stock data ticker. Ticker is going to be the argument that we're going to pass into it. So what we do here, we say ticker. And then I need to make a couple more imports and you can use this as well. But if you have your own stock market data uh, to use, you can use that as well. But we're going to say from budstop apis .weeble .weeble trading import weeble trading. Then we're going to say trading is weeble trading. So now what we're going to do is we're going to say um, let's do analyst ratings equals await trading dot analyst ratings. And we're going to pass in the ticker and then we're going to say analyst ratings. Let's do this real quick. We're going to say up here, we're going to move, do an empty dictionary dict equals we're going to, let's do data dict data dict equals empty dictionary. And then we're going to do this. We're going to say analyst ratings. Let's do analyst data frame equals analyst ratings dot where is it? Analyst ratings dot why is it not dot notated? It should be not notated, but it's not. Hold on. Await trading dot balance sheet ticker. Let's see if this one is. No, something's going on here, man. Did I not initialize this? No, I did. What's going on here? Let's see if this will work anyway, because maybe it's just the the tooltip that's not working. Oh, there it goes. Okay, cool. So it, it was working. It just wasn't showing up in the tooltip. So you should be able to use dot notation. It should show you all this stuff, but of course it's not working. But anyways, uh, okay. So analyst data frame equals analyst ratings dot data frame. And then we say data dict analyst ratings. Actually, let's do this. We're going to just return them individually so it'll be able to break it down. So we have analyst data frame. Let's get short interest equals await trading dot short interest ticker. And then we're going to say short DF equals short interest dot DF. And we're going to say one more thing. Let's do, let's just do quote data equals await trading dot quote. And then we're going to say ticker and then quote data frame equals quote data dot. I think it's DF or is it as data frame? Maybe not. Hmm. Let's do, hold on, let's see what else we got here. Let's do. Hmm. Let's let's try get stock quote. 
no, that's not working either. Okay, so let's just keep it at short interest and in analyst data frame for now. Um, and let's do volume analysis too. Vol anal equals await trading that volume analysis ticker, and then we're going to say vol df equals volume analysis dot data frame. Okay, so now we're just going to say return jsonify. Uh, and then we're going to put in the parentheses here, we're going to say analystdf.2 dict records, short df.2 dict records, and then vol df.2 dict records. And this should allow us to have GPT utilize this endpoint. So everything looks good there. I'm gonna go ahead and refresh this first. And then we're going to go back to our GPT and we're going to add in this uh, secondary endpoint here. So we're going to say API slash, what did we say it was? We said, oh, whoops, I need to copy this file over real quick. Give me one second. It's the uh, IDs that I have to transfer over So this one here paste it right here. Restart that real quick. And what did we call it? We said Oh, I need to do the ETF list also. ETF list. Let's see. It's got it right here, I think. Got to be in this one. ETF list, ETF list, right there. I'm going to go ahead and do OCC tickers also. Okay, that should fix that error there. And we'll paste these two new ones in our website folder here. Go ahead and paste those. Now it should work. Okay, so it's running and the route that we made was API slash stock data ticker. Okay, so we're now we're gonna go and finish that up. So API stock data ticker, stock, God dang it, I forgot about that. I'm gonna erase this here and I will fix it here. So API slash stock data slash ticker in curly brackets. Description is going to be gets analyst ratings, um, volume analysis, and short interest for a ticker. And then for operation ID, we're going to say stock data. And then parameters, ticker, and path. Volume and short interest for, and then that's it. Race depreciate false. And then we should be able to copy paste this back in here. And we should be good to go. We should see two paths down here now. So that's essentially it, right? So we're done. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and make this or save it. I swear it says create, like it's not even registering that this exists. Let's go ahead and test this. There you go. And now it's given us the analyst ratings. It says, here's the data I retrieved for Apple. It, I didn't provide a ticker. It just uh, picked Apple for me. Strong buy 12, buy 23, hold 10, underperform one. Short interest in volume, uh, you know, got that right here and then volume analysis. Then what you say, what about Microsoft? And then we'll call the API again. Um, if you don't want this message to pop up every time, just hit always allow. And it's, now it's going to talk again and get the same query, but for Microsoft. And that's all this is, man. That's all it is. And then you just you hook up different functions to it, and there you go. You can create your own custom GPT to do whatever the hell you want. And there you go, Microsoft uh, data right there. So if you want this to be published or you know accessible in the GPT store, you simply just go here 
And I, you have to have a privacy policy, which I will need to update real quick. That's not even working. They need to fix their crap, man. So you put it right here. So in this case, it would just be fun stop privacy. And then I'll create. And then I'll do GPT store. Category. Uh, why not? Eh, research and analysis. So now anybody can go and use this. They watch this video. You simply go to... I'll leave this in the description, but there you go. Now you we have a stock expert GPT that can get us the analyst ratings, the short interest, and the volume analysis data for whatever ticker we want. If, let's say you want to do two tickers and compare them. Hey, can you give the vol anal data for Microsoft, Apple, and Spy, and please visualize it so we can see it? And you know the data is coming from a reliable source because you put the data in it. You know you don't have to worry about you know hyphen uh, you know uh, hallucinating data and shit like that. No, I didn't, wasn't able to get the one for Spy for some reason, but it's still going to do the Microsoft and Apple. I wonder what happened with Spy. I'll have to look into that. But you get the idea. So let's see what it does for us for the visuals. Analyzing, what's it doing? Oh, it's gonna give us the short interest trend too. Nice. I swear to God, if it's not gonna, if, if it's, uh, okay, there you go. Perfect. So there you go. We have those two images. Not bad, huh? We have the short interest trend for Apple. You can see it here, um, spanning from 7.31 to 3.15. So that's uh, 7.31 of this year. That actually has this backwards. Hold on. You have the data backwards. Please flip the data frame around. And it will fix it because it had the most recent date on the left-hand side, not the right-hand side. But you can imagine, you know, the power of this, if you can, you know, set it up accurately. There we go. That's more like it. <laughs> so you get the idea. But that's how you make custom GPT connected to the stock market.